way back at the start of September 2016 in Phone Show 288, I gave you a glimpse of the HP Elite X3, the latest all singing, all dancing Windows Phone, or should I say Windows 10 mobile smartphone, since the OS has evolved a lot in the last couple of years. The only trouble was that it wasn't all singing, all dancing at that point, arriving with an older version of the OS and buggy firmware, it was more a case of singing out of tune and dancing like, well, like me at a 1970s disco. With specifications to die for when launched, the Snapdragon 820 chipset continually underperformed, the camera was appalling, the Bang & Olufsen stereo speakers seemed just like a branding exercise, and the promised HP laptop was missing in action. Thankfully, most of this was addressed by HP in the last three months with new OS version, anniversary update, aka Redstone, a new firmware making the Elite X3 much more stable and improving camera results, and the laptop finally arrived. Yet I still haven't published a full phone show review of the X3. I can't. The X3 bit of the name refers to the three-in-one system, the phone, the desktop, hooking up to office monitors or TVs, and the Elite X3 laptop. One device that's your phone, your office desktop, your road laptop. Well, that's the vision. And while the phone and office side of things are now stable and working well, the laptop has been unusably buggy for me over the last month, being terrible at resuming and reconnecting to the phone either wirelessly or via a USB Type-C cable. Plus the trackpad was horrid. The laptop was quite literally unreviewable. <laughs> that it was priced at £500 plus was something of a bad joke. Now, HP has collected the Elite X3 and its laptop for investigation and hopefully we'll see it return in a couple of months without the laptop firmware bugs and with the X3 itself sporting the new Redstone 2 OS aka Windows 10 Mobile Creators Update keep up at the back. And then and only then can I deliver a final verdict on this most interesting and yet so far disappointing product. Watch this space. But this relatively underwhelming saga for what was to be the flagship of flagships in the Windows 10 mobile world got me musing on the OS as a whole. After all, Windows Phone or Windows for Phones has been almost non-existent on this channel for the best part of a year. Where exactly is this competitor to Android and iOS on phones? And does it have a future? I should first mention that HP isn't the only game in town here. Alcatel brought a version of their Idol 4S with Windows 10 Mobile to market in the USA, and we're hoping that's gonna come out in Europe and worldwide any day now. Hey, MWC is just around the corner. The Idol 4S isn't quite flagship class in the sense of the Snapdragon 835 devices we're expecting to see launched this year from the likes of Samsung, but it's really not far off and feels very premium. You'll remember the BlackBerry DTX60 from Phone Show 294, essentially the same hardware. Combined with the professional nature of Windows 10 Mobile, that's going to be a genuine contender, I think. Then there are Microsoft's own Lumia flagships based on the last of the Nokia designs. The Lumia 950 and the 950 XL here are actually really decent units with just about every feature under the sun and still class-leading cameras. Plus, you get to swap out the battery and replace the back if needed. Not something that's commonplace in 2017. Sadly, Microsoft decided not to make any more Lumia 950 units after last summer, which is why the Lumia 950 and 950 XL have been at near clearance prices ever since. Hopefully many of you will have picked up a real bargain. I estimate that about 3 million 950 class phones were sold in all, but you can add to that quite a few Windows Phone fans with Lumia 930s and 1520s, both of which devices shipped with Windows Phone 8.1, but thanks to their 2 gig of RAM, work really, really well with Windows 10 Mobile. The upgrade is just a matter of running a simple wizard from the Windows Store. Plus a few miscellaneous devices, Lumia 550, 650, some upgraded 830s and 640s, and so on. Plus some lesser brand low-end phones. It all adds up to a living, breathing ecosystem of around 7 million genuinely daily active people or phones, by my calculations. At this point, Android and iOS fans will point out that an ecosystem of only 7 million people, however enthusiastic, hardly qualifies as an ecosystem compared to a billion iPhone users, and well over that, running some form of Android. Still, 7 million people is not zero, and I know this is something of a cop-out, but the universal Windows platform UWP apps written for Windows 10 usually work on phone, tablet, and laptop, and sometimes Xbox and HoloLens as well, so it's 
It's not entirely misleading to suggest that the Windows 10 mobile ecosystem can be thought of as including the half billion people using Windows 10 on other form factors. Certainly developers can target the lot of them in one go. Windows Phone, as in Windows Phone 8.1, is dead in a sense, as in it hasn't been updated for a couple of years and you can't now buy phones running it. But Windows 10 is very much alive and it has to be for Microsoft's sake. After all, it's planning to refactor the full Windows 10, including Win32 compatibility, or at least emulation, on the tablet, the laptop, the hybrid, around ARM chipsets in the near future, giving much better performance with lower battery drain when compared to Intel chipsets. But quite a few of these devices will need full telephony, full data and the bits you otherwise associate with a phone. So the continued support for Windows 10 on ARM chips now, i.e. on the Snapdragon 800, 808, 810 and 820 in Windows 10 Mobile will reap dividends when LTE data, for example, is built into a 2018 Windows 10 on ARM tablet or hybrid or Shokora, a high-end phablet stroke phone. In short, is Windows Phone 8.1 dead? Yes, that's fair-ish. Is Windows 10 Mobile dead? Not in the slightest, though I'd agree it's largely irrelevant in the consumer mobile mass market, in 2017 at least, in terms of raw numbers. Which is a crying shame. Windows 10 Mobile is super pretty, super elegant, super scalable thanks to Continuum, super secure, yet hardly anyone outside of the enthusiast world is actively using it. Watch this space later this year for news of new Microsoft hardware and for a review, hopefully, of Alcatel's Idle 4S in full Windows 10 Mobile, guys. It's the quiet season for phones, leading up to MWC 2017, so I thought I'd throw in something entirely different, yet relevant. Now, emergency power banks are very common, of course. You know the drill by now. Micro USB input, two amp output via USB standard sockets, quick charge compatible if you're lucky, and so on. But the Lumsing Glory P2 Plus, yes, it's a mouthful, is different, adding in numerous real world useful extras and tricks, which is why I wanted to show it off. For starters, there's both micro USB and USB Type C input, so you can recharge the Glory. P2 Plus, whatever you've got to hand, and at 2.1 amps each. But it gets better because you can recharge using both at the same time. In other words, you can recharge the Glory P2 Plus at 4.2 amps if you have a couple of suitable mains chargers to hand, meaning that the empty power bank can be completely filled in under three hours rather than it being an overnight job, as is usual. Secondly, the Glory P2 Plus can dispense current across Type-C and the twin USB Type-A ports here, again, all at the same time, all three, meaning you can charge three things at once with a total power output of 45 watts. Impressive. The twin USB-A ports use coloured blades with green indicating Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 and 3.0 compatibility and blue indicating a so-called smart port with intelligence to scale from low to high current requirements. Now for USB power delivery, think flagship Lumia's Nexus and Pixel devices, best stick to a direct USB Type-C to Type-C link though, as the port here goes up to 3.1 amps at 5 volts. With high capacity, solid grippy metal build, twin simultaneous input and triple simultaneous output, the Lumsing Glory P2 Plus is probably the most capable and sophisticated pocketable power bank in the world right now. Uh, currently super valued too, as I record this, it's just under £19, all in on Amazon UK. Wow. 